Whether it's out of control powers or shape-shifting characters, these anime theories will change everything for the shows you love and watch. Fans have come up with some spot-on theories that explain some of the biggest questions and also hook us into watching more through their cool predictions. What is beyond the wall in Attack on Titan? And should Goku really even be protecting Earth? Is Ash in a coma? And did Junko secretly escape being executed? Watch this video until the end to see which fan theories you already knew and which will change everything. Before we get started, give us a subscribe if you're new to Screen Rant to be the very first to receive new content each day. What's Beyond the Wall? The old question of what is beyond the wall in Attack on Titan still remains. Fans have questioned this for years until finally, someone came up with a theory to help explain. The theory suggests that the people who live on the other side of the wall actually live a luxurious, lavish lifestyle. This would explain why all the books about the outside world are banned within the wall. The outside world doesn't want those inside the wall to know of the alternate society they live in. It is theorized that everyone within the walls are actually destined to turn into titans themselves as they have been sickened by a plague. Another theorist elaborated on this and went as far as to say that all titans are dead people. Once someone inside the wall dies, they become a titan. Now the outside world is looking pretty good if these theories are true. Perhaps this is why Raynor wants to destroy all of humanity inside the walls. Why? Because Dr. Jaeger's cure wasn't a cure at all, but the actual cause of them turning into titans. Either theory still suggests the people on the outside are keeping their amazing lives secret from the dreaded purgatory on the inside. N is really Pokemon. Pokemon, oh Pokemon. This next theory is pretty popular and extremely controversial among devoted fans. Fans have very strong opinions for and against the theory that N is really a Pokemon. The character of N, whose real name is Natural Harmonia Gropius, appears in Pokemon Black, White, Black 2, and White 2. He is the leader of Team Plasma, but may have greater plans than just that. The theory says that N is really Zoroark, casting an illusion to be in control. Zoroark appears as a human in some of the shows, which lend credibility to this theory as he could make himself appear as N. Not to mention that N has similarities to the Pokemon Zoroark. The question that is asked on otakuart.com is, is it a possibility that N's motivations to separate humans from their Pokemon could, in fact, be the desire of a Zoroark? Maybe Zoroark no longer wants to feel abused by a human and being used to gain power. Zoroark has motivations of his own, to end what he sees as an injustice to Pokemon. If this theory is true, that completely changes our view of these episodes and of N. Boruto's Right Eye Boruto is Naruto's son, who dreams of creating his own ninja path instead of following in his father's footsteps. Momoshiki and Boruto actually have the same eye. Their right eyes are close to identical, and they have the same line underneath it. So what does this mean? The eyes appear as glowing light with a black ring, giving a hint that it is some sort of mutation. Well, in Naruto, one of the biggest obstacles Naruto faces was the nine-tailed fox beast inside of him that he couldn't control. So many fans have theorized that Boruto's eye will cause similar issues, especially since Momoshiki tells Boruto that he will lose everything because of his eye. Could that be from past experience? If Boruto does not learn to control his powers, he could face the same fate. When we start off the series, Boruto must face Kawaki in battle. Konoha is destroyed, which made fans ask what caused the death. Some say it was Kawaki's destruction, while others think it was Boruto's Jogen out of control. His eye may be the mutation that causes these extreme powers, as they may be inherited. Do you think a Momoshiki has anything to do with Boruto's eye? And do you think it will end up causing trouble, as predicted? <laughs> Mostly a dream. In the anime series Ninshichu, a fan came up with a brilliant theory stating that half the series is actually Tadakuni's dream, specifically from episode 4 to 12. In episode 4, Tadakuni is lying on the floor. After that, we don't see him again until episode 9. Did he fall asleep? Well, in episode 12, we see him again in the same location as he sits up and says, It was all a dream! So it sure seems like he did. 
Was he referring to all those crazy episodes since number four? During the in-between episodes, Tadakuni dreams of Ringo. She only appears in the dream episodes, never before or after. Ringo was imagined by Tadakuni in his sleep, as the two also never met face to face. There are two guys describing Ringo, which is actually Tadakuni's id and ego. In episode four, Tadakuni also goes missing, which could mean he's passed out asleep and they couldn't find him seems too perfect to be a coincidence. Knowing this theory and how accurate it sounds really changes everything about the series. If you watch it all as a dream, does it change anything for you? Does it become more interesting? No, Light, you weren't actually a god back then. You were something else. Light became the unnamed Shinigami. In Death Note Relight 1, a crazy but seemingly accurate theory questions if Light Yagami becomes a Shinigami after his death. Light dies on a staircase after escaping the warehouse where Teru Mikami commits suicide. Due to his own wounds, Light doesn't make it far and dies of cardiac arrest. Ryuk, a Shinigami, writes Light's death note. A new Shinigami shows up in the Shinigami realm looking for Ryuk. The theory states that this unnamed god of death is actually Light. Could the unnamed Shinigami be Light reincarnated? The similarities may be too abundant to dismiss. First off, his coat is similar to Light's when he dies. He walks up the stairs to meet Ryuk, a nod to the staircase that Light died on. He tosses Ryuk an apple, which is odd because unless he knew Ryuk previously, how would he know about his love for apples? Plus, in previous episodes, Ryuk tells Light that once a human uses a death note, they are not able to go to heaven or hell, which means Light would be left to being a Shinigami. Perhaps even the hairband that the unknown Shinigami wears was Light's headband. The most damning evidence is when Ryuk uses Light's real name of Raito when he leaves. Seems pretty unquestionable to us. Oh, hi, Pikachu! Pika. Ash's Coma Pokemon has taken over the world in many different forms. From the card trading game to video games to TV, and even the Pokemon Go that had fans scavenging in the streets. There's one extreme fan theory that completely will change how you watch the show. In earlier episodes, Ash is hit by lightning, and after that moment, the show seems to shift completely. The tone, mood, pacing, and even how the story development seems to change from normal to more absurd. The theory states that Ash was rushed to the hospital in a serious coma. Since that moment, his coma allowed Ash to live out his Pokemon Master's desires. This explains all the new realms he enters that no one has heard of, and it explains the safe socialist government that Ash's subconscious must have placed in his coma to keep him safe, which allows him to have all the adventures he does. This theory would also explain why a kid can go off on his own and why Ash never ages. We I mean, it seems like Ash has been 13 for some time now. It does make a lot of sense, even more so than the actual story. Hello, Ivankov. My, my, it's been a long time. A eh, Croco boy? Crocodile was a woman. Fans can come up with the most creative and outrageous theories that sometimes seem so real, they change everything. This is exactly what has happened for the anime, One Piece, where a fan theorizes that the crocodile used to be a woman, specifically Luffy's mom. It may be out there, but it also seems true. Sir Crocodile is one of the main antagonists in the series, and the only one to beat Luffy twice. So how does this theory hold up? Well, Ivanov changed Crocodile into a man, as he has the powers to change people's genders. Why would he do this? The theory states that before Ivanov turned Crocodile into a man, Croco got together with Dragon and had Luffy. However, then Ivanov, dressed as an Okama, or transgender, got together with Crocodile. Ivanov was angry at this regretful encounter and turned Crocodile into a dude. This could also explain Ivanov saying he knows a secret about Crocodile. Also as a child, Crocodile looks rather androgynous and could really be either gender. Following Luffy's family tree, that means his grandparents are Garp and Whitebeard, he sure has the most powerful heritage. But back to his mother, Sir Crocodile. Do you think this theory holds up? The real god is Kion. In the anime Haruhi Suzumiya, one fan came up with the theory that Kion is actually the real god. Instead, Kion created Haruhi for his own enjoyment. The entire show is based around Kion, who constantly gets himself into near-death situations and miraculously is always saved. Doesn't this seem a little strange? Summer also doesn't end in Kion's world, until he finishes his homework. 
He even says, my summer can't be over until I finish it, meaning he refuses to go back to school until he's completely ready, which he could do if he was the actual god. Another fan theorist has another take on the series, suggesting that Haruhi is another aspect of Kion's personality, or even someone to use his powers through. Ultimately stating the same thing, Kion is a god. At the beginning of the series it even says he once wanted to believe in time travel, aliens, and espers, but has learned to suppress it. Having someone else have godlike powers to create these things allows him denial, basically saying Kion chose to run the place through someone else to enable his denial. How poetic. Oh man, what power! I think the whole planet is actually shaking! Goku shouldn't be here. Dragon Ball Z is built around our most powerful and fun-loving hero, Goku, but there is a theory that suggests everyone may be better off without him around. Sure, he saved the Earth from exploding on a weekly basis, but maybe the Earth is only in danger because he's around. When Goku came to Earth, Raditz followed him and in turn created destruction. So if Goku didn't come, Raditz wouldn't have come which in turn means Vegeta and Nappa wouldn't have come to Earth hunting for the Dragon Balls. Dr. Jiro wouldn't have promised to murder his unknown child, meaning androids and Cell wouldn't be made, and with no Super Saiyans, the energy to release Boo from his cocoon wouldn't be present. These are all the major adversaries, or shall we say villains, that threaten Earth and Goku. But they wouldn't even be there if he wasn't. Without all these alien threats, Bulma could have focused more on her brilliant inventions, such as the time machine created in her basement. But instead, she and Capsule Corp are always dealing with the latest world-shattering crises. So Goku's really brought a lot of trauma to the world. Sure, we know Goku means well, but the theory really turns everything upside down. Seems like everyone would be better off with Goku gone. Which theory changes your thoughts on a show the most? Do you have any crazy fan theories of your own? Which one shocked you the most? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give us a like and hit that subscribe button to be the very first one in the know for all things Screen Rant. Thanks for watching.